me, you as human beings, we can easily feel threatened when we don't understand certain things because we want to understand. But meanwhile, that what we want to understand is because we want to be in control. You don't understand something that happened. You don't understand this in a relationship or that. This was wrong. That was right in relationships. But at the end of the day, what is the revelation of what God wants to do? What is his heart? That is something else. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 2. Please, with me. If I find it. I think 1 Corinthians is just before 2 Corinthians. Hey, eh? Something like that. There we go. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man, not necessarily you with a hell of an attitude or with a lot of sin in your life or justification or that, just you as a natural person cannot receive what is from God? Cannot. It's only through your spirit when you are reborn. Because it must be spiritually discerned. That's why if you're not a child of God, if your spirit that's in the state of death, if your spirit is not reborn, you cannot understand the things of God. You cannot receive the revelation in your spirit. Are you with me? And God said, when you eat from this tree, you will surely die. It means your spiritual understanding will die. Your spirit will die. They didn't eat from the fruit and boom, they, they felt dead. No. But their spirit that was perfect and connected with the Holy Spirit came in a state of death. And that if your spirit is not redeemed, reborn, that that person will be in hell forever. Because death is in the center of their lives. Hello? But now, when you gave your life to Christ, you are reborn, yes. And then Romans 8 says, the Holy Spirit testify in my spirit. Hello? And through my spirit, the Holy Spirit, I cry out, Abba. That is Papa. That is, from that place I know my identity. But if I don't know my identity, when somebody do me wrong, or somebody insulted me, or somebody treated me in the wrong way, I get attitude because I live a soulish life. I don't live from my spirit. I'm not a spirit man. I don't live as a spirit man. Let me rather say it like that. I am a spirit man, but I don't live. And that is what is necessary. But now something happened, and my soul has now suddenly an opinion. And I give myself the right that my spirit and your spirit will not connect. Even though the word says, this will not be honored. What happened will be honored in my opinion and evaluation of whatever happened according to my soul. That will be honored. Finish. The problem is not with you and the person. The problem is with you and God. May God set us free. Amen. Peter, let's look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16. It says, it's where Jesus asked the apostles, the disciples, who do they say who I am? Let's hear the opinion. Let's hear their understanding. And what was said? No. What they understand is you're either Elijah or Jeremiah or John the Baptist or one of the prophets. That's it. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. That's who you are. And then Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say who I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. We all know that. 
And then Jesus said, blessed are you. Because this is not revealed by flesh and blood. Your flesh and blood, your natural man cannot reveal that to you. You cannot understand the Son of God in your life. You cannot have relationship. You cannot have that intimate knowing of who he is if you are not reborn. And if as a child of God, you cannot live from your spirit, you will never, never understand Christ as the Son of God in your life. And knowing him, that is eternal life. John 17, 3. But my question then is, God gives revelation so that you can understand and have answers for your questions. No. God gives you revelation so that you can come into this intimate, re eternal relationship with Christ. So that you can live eternity today. Because you know him. So the revelation, first of all, is Christ on the scene. Christ on the scene, you're receiving him, the child of God. Christ on the scene in tomorrow. Where is he in your tomorrow? Where is he waiting for you? Where does he want you to shh? And where does he want you to speak? It's not about performance. I must oh, know the whole time. When you come to know him more and more, it will come naturally. Because when it comes from your spirit, your spirit and God's spirit is connected. When 2 Corinthians 5, you can write that down, says, I'm a new creation. Everything became new. You look at your soul, you look at your life, you say, that is absolutely ridiculous. Not possible. Because I make mistakes, you make mistakes. We get frustrated and all of that, or we get fed up about certain things, and then we just say, and then you make a soulish decision. But my, my spirit is perfect. Everything became new. Where? In my spirit. My spirit is perfect. The fullness of God dwells in my spirit. How? Because the heart of heaven is poured out in my spirit. Are you with me? Once again, Romans 8. Let it be so for you. Let it be so for me in the name of Jesus Christ. But the frustration, many times, when God will speak to you in your spirit, you will be frustrated in your soul. Now we see in that, as you've written that down, Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18, but then you go three, one, two, three, three verses further. And then from this place where this man, Peter, got this revelation, suddenly, and God says, on what you say, and what you know, I'm going to build my church. Three verses further. God comes to the place where he said, get behind me, Satan. Isn't that what you say? Whoa. This one of the 12 disciples that come with the biggest revelation. The biggest revelation. From his mouth. Three verses. Three verses further. And he comes with a rebuke that Jesus gave no, nobody in that way. That were close to him. He said, get behind me, Satan. Because you are not mindful of the things of man. Of, of God. But you are mindful of the things of man. Not you are mindful of the things from the devil. Not even the devil. It's just your natural man. Your soul. Your soulish man. Even you have good intentions. Even your heart is genuine. I can do something, say something with a genuine heart. And God can say, get behind me, Satan. And when do we take offense? When do we block? We think the person. We block the Holy Spirit, first of all. Before I will block something with Franzel. Because I'm offended with what he said or what he did. If I have this issue with him, I have only an issue if I block the Holy Spirit. Your issue is, my issue is within with God, not with Franzel. Are you with me? And then God help me that we will grow up. Because my spirit, somewhere, my spirit and the Holy Spirit, that beautiful interaction with the perfection in me and God as the perfection. That place of 
perfect interaction that can happen. I just ignore that. But if that is valuable, 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 in the knowing of who he is, in the eternal, intimate knowing him as a relationship called eternal life, that's supposed to be the most precious. True? Ah. But Peter received the revelation, but he didn't understand what it meant. You can have the revelation, but still understand nothing. So don't think, God spoke to me and I got this revelation, I got this revelation. Yes, there's certain things that you understand then from him in that context. But don't go out there and think that you understand now why certain things happen in your life. Not at all. Why must Christians be martyrs? Some of them. Why? Why can't we not just slaughter the the other guys? I know we know all the answers and what I say is totally ridiculous. But I say then there's this man, there's this man, and he's standing with God, him and his family, working hard, worker is worthy his wages. He's faithful with God. He's a hard worker. Him and his wife in unity, they pray, they seek his face, they follow his strategies, they speak the word. Not the other guys around the corner. They are there in Brantford having their shop. And suddenly this atheist, this guy that swears and, and used the name Jesus as a, as a curse word, as a swear word, opens up this big shot, this big shot, and he opened this, this major building, or maybe some other, what is it, Keting Winkle. What is a Keting Winkle? Chain, chain shop. Whatever. He opened this big shop. And suddenly this other guy, for what he built for 20 years, go down, bankrupt. Just before his three children going to varsity that he saved up for 20 years, faithful, hard worker, unity with wives, spoke the word, prayed, took blessings. Tell me, how do you understand it? But he walked with a relation. This is a very simple example. Let's see you in a photo. You are looking to the world. And, and that's what we preached a lot about Ecclesiastes. Where the man that had all the wisdom. Not all the wisdom. But he was the one. And all the wisdom coming through him. God said that will be known into the nations for the next 2,000, 3,000 years. Mr. Solomon. And that then just after that, when he's old, he had all the wisdom, he had all the, the riches of the world, that the, even the queen of Sheba come and see, and all, that, all this riches. He had all the money and the stuff. He has all the wisdom. And he had all the women. 1,000 of them. And at the end of his day, he says, what? I know nothing. Everything, vanity, foolishness, foolishness. The only thing I know, fear God, keep his commandments. The only thing I know is respect him and do as he says. Respect him and do as he says. Because this is a revelation. To understand everything, he come and say, I actually understand nothing. But I have a revelation given by God to me. And that is, I respect him as my God, and I will do as he says. Boom! <laughs> you are with me? That's what the words, this scripture says. Natural man cannot receive, but you need to understand spiritually. But if you're not reborn with a perfect spirit that must grow up, then you will not understand interaction with the Holy Spirit, because you need to know the language. Your spirit is perfect, but it can be still like immature. Immature. I'm not talking about childish, because that's bad attitude, that's, then your spirit is not perfect. No, I'm talking your spirit is perfect, but he must grow up. 
You must feed your spirit with a word. Are you with me? You cannot bully the spirit. When, you're, when somebody is hungry, I said, when a child is hungry, mom and dad, yeah, he's hungry. And then for a week, he's hungry. And more and more, he says he's hungry, but you don't do anything. You just ignore him. What type of mom or dad will ever do that, even if you're an atheist? Who will do that? That will be sick. Are you with me? But now I'm asking, your spirit is hungry, always hungry for the word of God. But your soul is like the parents that has to say, because in your soul you have the decisions. You make the decisions with your soul. And soul is busy with his stuff, ignoring the essence of your whole life that cries out. Because they hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hey? Matthew 5. So there's a hunger in your spirit, my brother, my sister. Why will you bring damage to who you are? Why will you not hear the cry in your spirit? He says, I want to know him. I want to know. I want to eat his word. I'm in love with his word. I need his word. Not... First of all, my brother and sister, my soul needs answers. My soul has questions. My emotions need healing. The will of God, what is the will of God for me to do? So, yes, 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 yes. Mind must be renewed. Everybody do this. Romans 12, verse 2. The renewing of the mind. And then take all the thoughts captive. Present yourself. So that you can know what is the good, pleasant, perfect will of God. All of that, that is the working out of the word in your soul. But before you get there, you need to come from a place of knowing through the Holy Spirit, in your spirit, the word. Where it's, the word is richly dwelling in you. Richly dwelling. The word is alive in you. Only. Holy Spirit and Spirit connection. Natural man cannot receive it. I'm not talking about the about an allergen. Vegan, not an allergen. Hey, I mean, I'm not talking about you. I see you taking notes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, let's live from our spirit. Amen. Let it be so. We see Peter, how can this man do this? He's the guy that from his mouth must come under the guidance of the Spirit and say, you crucified him. So he was speaking to people who were there that screamed out, crucify him, crucify him. Maybe some soldiers, some, some guys that were pushing the whole, the whole thing, Pharisees, they were there. And those Pharisees, those guys that pushed for Christ to be crucified, he said, this is what you've done just this other day. But for you who did it, just think it was you. Just think if it was you. Not the other million. You are in the crowd. And you know I'm so responsible in the sense of guilty. He said, this is what you've done. But today, redemption is here for you. This man spoke and 3,000 came to repentance. And then he talked about, we talk about 5,000 and just about the multitude. <laughs> Still not here? Okay. Rest here. I know you are praying while I'm speaking, but still. Um, pray like this. <laughs> okay. As you met me. So please, my brother, get into the word. Ah, get into the word. You with me? So this, this man of power for the hour, Mr. Peter, for the first breakthrough of the true, pure gospel into the nation towards those who crucified him from a man who had to learn how to deal with us. For what came out here, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, in what you say. Jesus said that to you. 
I don't know, because you were mindful, not of the things of God, but of your natural man. Just to see naturally, I think, I mean, just use your common sense. Doesn't mean everything of God is irrational. But the scripture says it is foolishness to man. And that was God's choice. That the foolishness of the gospel will expose the wisdom of man actually as nothing. It's nothing. Are you with me? That's, I told you, when I wanted to go carry on with, with medical studies and said, as doctor, I'm going to go behind the iron curtain of the communist countries and I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to give my life and do this and this and this and this. How can you expect me to leave medicine and and I can do all this stuff. I got a verse in my spirit. The natural man does not receive the things of God. <clears throat> so I said, sorry, and ignored the question for three months. <laughs> because I was very, very, very just intellectually, you won't believe it, but I was very just evaluating intellectually everything. Praise God, he changed me. But, where are we? I'm talking about Samuel. 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 plus 7. You can write that. 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 and 7. Here's the prophet. Let's go with the prophet. The word says, all the words of the, this prophet became true. 100% success in his ministry. Would you want to be there? In our job, God can write for the next generation. 100% faithful in everything I told him, he said. And whatever he prophesied came true. Wow. Now this man comes to find the king, King David. And he evaluates as, evaluate as a natural man. And there the guy comes. And the word says, surely... Verseker. Sekerlik. Not maybe that is the one. Not even maybe. This man says, surely, this prophet says, surely that is the man. Praise God. His spirit is awake. And God said to him, to him don't see. Not what you see is what I see. I evaluate the heart. I evaluate in a total different way. Praise God. He had the faithfulness to hear from his spirit. You can be a prophet, not walking in a lot of rubbish, in a lot of sin, and therefore you couldn't understand. No, you can, you can be faithful. You can be faithful and don't understand and make such a rubbish decision in your life. I'm not talking a decision by falling into a lot of rubbish. I'm talking about Choices about your calling, about your future, about where to live, about those type of stuff. And you can make such a foolish decision. Because you used your brain. You are not stupid. and You are not stupid. But what you did was foolish. Because you didn't consult the law. Especially the guys that are not stupid. They have quite that amount of temptation. Nah. I need some amen. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Guys, because that is easier to understand. I mustn't steal. You know, when I put in the offering, it's not put in the offering and take some change. Or I stand on the scripture. What you sow, you will reap. So you sow and then you reap. No, 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 not like that. Hey, not at all. We call that stupidity. You, uh, you, have a, you have a good brain. But please, may God protect your choices in his wisdom. This was made my car. Okay, so when you use your brain, your natural man, you will not be irresponsible. You will make a responsible decision. According to you, it's irresponsible to think that the little boy watching the sheep, that he is the king. I mean, come on, let's use our brains. 
Yes, the guys, you look at their stature, look at their size. Look, at, look they, they know about warfare. They are soldiers. Come on, they have experience. They, have to, well, they are trained. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all there. So let's use our brain. It's for God, it's for his kingdom. Let's not be irrational. I'm going that side where God is. Don't be irrational. Oops. Let's not be irresponsible. No? I come to this place to say, he's the one. There must be another son. That's taking a risk. What if he said, no, there's no other son? Dad, did you forget how many children you have? Hello? Oh, yeah, there's David still. Man, just watching the sheep, this young guy. He's the guy. Irrational, it's irresponsible to think you can put this burden on this little boy watching sheep. How many times did God challenge you in those type of choices? <laughs> allow, him, allow him to do that. Amen? Are you with me? You want to sleep? You stand there at the back. Okay. Praise the Lord. God is awesome. Has you met me? The last one I quickly will say, Mr. Moses. Twelve come back. Ten, not just bound by fear, but evaluating and say, let's use your common sense. Just apply your brain. You know? Facts. Giant. Big. We. Small. They. Warriors. We. Slaves. This is their place. This is everything what can happen. Let's be responsible. I don't want my children to die here. And they said, you brought us out to die here because this was a real stupid idea. This was a stupid idea. God's idea, revelation, towards this, these guys and said, this was stupid. It's not this temptation to go and slaughter them or this or that. No, this is we make it a responsible decision. But the natural man does not receive the things of God. Are you with me? If you didn't come into that type of challenges, my brother, you're not standing at Jordan's going for breakthroughs. But somewhere you are warawaraing around in your life. But there will be stages where you will see that confrontation, that war inside of you in some decision makers where you at the end of the day will make a decision that your mind says this is irrational i'm not talking about spooky spiritual i'm talking about having the guts to respect him and do as he says even though you don't understand why and the two joshua caleb they said no let's just go god promised we don't agree with those guys. No, they can agree with them rationally. The giants, they're big. They are trained. They know how to. We are not trained. We were slaves for 400 years. How do we know how to be soldiers, how to fight these giants? There's no way. It's stupid to think we can do it. But still, I have a revelation about the greatness of our God. God is, God is such an awesome God. You will find it just for the time's sake. Numbers 14, verse 7 to 10. Numbers 14, verse 7 to 10. But they spoke about the greatness of God and what he promised, what he said. Therefore, surely, they are our fruit. We will just grow through this challenge. That's all. Through your challenges, you will grow if you focus on the greatness of God. If you focus on the revelation of who he is. Not a revelation to understand everything. Because if I understand, if I must understand, what will you do? What will I do? But how will we do, will we do Jericho? How will we do it? Then? Uh, uh, what type of strategy will we follow? Let's just be responsible. Let's not be immature. Let's be responsible. What are we going to do there? If a man... Failed to plan, he planned to fail. There's no plan. Joshua, Caleb, there's only one plan. 
in, when the whole generation died for 40 years. What's the plan now? There's only one plan. We follow God, whatever he says. The one that doesn't follow God and that leader, Joshua, we kill him. Hmm. Interesting. Are you with me? And then they had the capacity to receive the most ridiculous strategies to inherit their destiny. For you to inherit your real destiny, there will be some ridiculous strategies. I challenge you. I challenge you today. You say, well, you live as a natural man that cannot receive, really receive and walk into your destiny. Or will you be the spiritual man that God made you? What he died for, so that your spirit can be reborn. Get your soul in line. Let your body walk out the mandate in your spirit. But from your spirit, you need to live. As you limit me. Okay, we end off with 1 Corinthians. Well, do we? 10 to 12. But God has revealed them to us. His heart. Just before that, sorry, verse 9. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. You cannot see it. You cannot hear it. It cannot enter your heart. It's impossible what God has for you. But, then verse 10, starts with but. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the Spirit searches the things, yes, the very deep things of God. For what man, what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. But it's not just the Spirit of God that will reveal it to you, and that's it. If you are not reborn, it's about the connection of your Spirit and ye Spirit. From the depths of God to the depths of who I am. From the genuine him to the genuine me. That is a genuine relationship. Because the Spirit of God shouts oh, miracles and major manifestations through the Spirit of God. A lot of those people burn in hell. But Spirit, Spirit connection. That is the essence. You can later learn it in such a way that your spirit can connect with the spirit of somebody else. And if you can connect with the spirit of people, then we will not be so easily offended. If I don't agree with a person, why well, I a little bit withdraw my heart or my commitment or my this, or that one didn't treat, your boss didn't treat you right. Uh, the leader didn't say thank you. Or, whilst I was under, all of us in the Easter service. Seeker, yeah. Or well, that's under, or some students, just three. They really worked hard, and the moment they took a break, I saw them. And I was saying, Why are you standing and not working? The most famous words in Creole. Pastor, I just took a break. Just now. <laughs> ah, yeah, hallelujah. The Lord is good. Maybe it was, yes. Sometimes it's to me like the humor of God that sometimes it happens like that. But the Lord is good. When Grant, they left, at one stage I just felt I was phoning. I, I phoned him and said, so how's Fentersburg? Pastor, how did you know it? <laughs> oh, 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 what the, what? what? <laughs> I just laughed. They were just entering on the Meet this Fentersburg. I ah, asked sometimes, he said, can I, I said, can I not practice prophetically? But it wasn't even in my heart to think prophetically, whatever. I think his God has a sense of humor. You with me? Sometimes he will just do certain things. Sometimes I would, it happened, I will pick up the phone. Now don't you go with that. I, I will mean it when I ask you that. Why are you doing that? And not, hello, how are you doing? Or this, I say, why are you doing that? Uh, uh, Pastor, I'm sorry. I just fell into this damn attention. And with it, I said, what? 
<laughs> I was just saying that. Uh, in a very natural way, even you can be led by the Spirit, you know. And sometimes it's actually the humor of God, even, that you can do it in such a way. As you met me. Look at that prince there. So when are you going? Then there was this opportunity. I said, so when are you going? Must we not maybe do 10 questions before the time? And I just made the decision a few hours ago to go, <laughs> to leave. But I didn't say something prophetically. God can use you in such way that, ways that you are shocked about how naturally it can come when you develop your spirit. When you really develop your spirit. And then even if your body is down, your spirit can receive. That's why five weeks, five weeks of... Uh, Apostolic Impartation for Ministry course with Dr. Jonathan in 2002. I've never had something like that in my life. Five weeks from the morning, 8 o'clock, you start to 5 o'clock, and then 6 o'clock for three, four hours, you stand in worship every day, every night. In the night, 6 to 10, you stand. They take the chairs away. There's not an option to sit. And you are busy most of the time praying in tongues and this ministry and this and this. And it's not like him. Five weeks. Just, you just think about that. Five weeks. Not off day. On the seventh day. No. And by that last week, we sat there. And there were even apostolic leaders with a lot of churches. And, and Dr. Jonathan said, I know you are all tired. If I just look at you, if I just look at you, it's, you're all tired, he said. But your spirit is so hungry. If you just don't block with your soul to receive, that you believe I am too tired to receive. And with your stupidic faith, you block what your spirit could have received. I'm open. I'm not registering. I don't really understand. But I'm open. I receive words of life. And let words of life bring life in my spirit. And I choose that my spirit is open. So that you can become. And come to understand what? That you will be a worshiper in spirit. Your spirit. And truth. The word. So if my spirit is not awake. And interacting with the word. You're not a true worshiper. According to John 4. 23 and 24. Are you with me? Are you with me? So verse 10. But God has revealed it through his spirit. Through his spirit. For the spirit searches all the things. Yes, we read that. Hey, Verse. Verse. Must I read in the spirit or must I be able to read it? Ah. Uh, these things have not, these have, things have been freely given to you by God. Freely you can receive it. But it will cost you your life. It will cost you your soulish life. It will cost you to lose control. I cannot believe how many times I must keep some of these guys awake. You must give me some apples. I cannot throw stones. That's, that's illegal. That's like Pharisees. But apples that are just all water guns that I can. Psh! Yeah. Okay. What are we saying? What are we saying at the end of the day, my brother? Let your spirit be awake. If God is willing to put the fullness of his spirit in you. He count that place, the essence of your life, as very, very, very precious. Don't you mess up what is precious. And throw the pills in front of the pigs. The pigs with all the hamars could be in your soul. Pigs with all the hamars could be in your soul. And that precious moment, you take that pill and you don't put it here in your spirit, but you throw it just, ah uh ah. -uh. What is coming from God, let it be precious to you. Respect the life that God has given you. Respect what God has put in your spirit. Because it's precious. It's eternal. 
Amen. I say, I will respect what Christ has put in my spirit. Thank you, Father, that you are an awesome God. I thank you for what you've placed in us. Lord, help us to live from our spirit, that we will really worship you in spirit and truth, that we can minister to you, that we can love you. I pray for every man, every woman here, God, that you will have mercy on us, that we will not work, walk, make decisions just according to our natural mind as natural men. But God, we can only receive it when you reveal it to us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in these days and let it explode in us. Help us that we will feed our spirits, that our spirit will be awake, will become strong, even as we pray in tongues, even as we are busy with your word, so that your word will dwell richly, richly, richly in our lives, Lord. We honor you for that. We thank you for the mind of Christ that can be revealed through our spirit. I pray for that, that for every man here, and there will not be the curses from their souls, but from their spirit, they will be awesomely, awesomely blessed. So it will be in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen.